All right, recording is rolling. So welcome to Monday, January 10th. Uh, we're starting next section today, which is going to be simple harmonic motion, waves, anything that oscillates has some kind of time period or frequency associated with it. Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, kickstart the subject with a, a, a lab. But before I get to that, uh, you guys have a new page clipped to the side of your desk. You guys see one looks like this. It says chapter 14, weight, uh, vibrations of waves on one side. Flip it over, it says chapter 15, sound on the other side. Okay, see that? Everybody's got this page? Okay. All right, so uh, the problems that I'm going to be covering, you guys, it's going to go. All right, here's a, here's what I'm assigning here. So, uh, mostly I'm pulling problems from chapter 14, but a few from 15. Um, these will be your main homework problems uh, due two Fridays from now, so two weeks from now on Friday. Okay. And then um, if you want to do bonus homework, pick up some extra points, then uh, that'll be that there. All right, so uh, I will create uh, columns in focus and uh, type these problems there. I I'm recording this right now and I'll post this video. So, and of course, you guys. See these problems right here. So there's a three places you guys could get that information. Okay. All right. So and, and then just just like normal, just like I've been doing all year long, uh, I will go over these with you guys so that as long as you're paying attention in class, then you'll be plenty good to go. All right. Uh, you guys just got this uh, got this lab page. Did, or does anybody not have this lab page? It's got, this, it's got some tables on one side. It's got some graphs on the other side. So we're going to start with this uh, pendulum lab uh, to look at this uh, periodic motion. Uh, this was um, this was uh, one question that uh, Galileo uh, was one of the first people to uh, try to answer, try to tackle. Uh, the story goes, if I get these details right, I think he walked into a church and he saw some kind of pendulum like swinging from the ceiling. And we're, we're talking about the 16th century. So what, what is he going to use to time this? He doesn't have these stopwatches. Uh, so he was actually using his heartbeat, like his pulse, as a rudimentary uh, stopwatch. He was trying to figure out, well, what is uh, what, what governs the motion of the pendulum? Say, like this time period, for example. How is that related to, oh, maybe some of these other variables that I've listed up here? Uh, maybe, for example, uh, the mass. Like, um, here, let, let's go through these uh, one, one at a time. And let's do some quick hypothesizing. Okay. So, for example, if you increase the mass, say from 100 to 200 grams, if you double this mass, uh, how is that going to affect the time period of the pendulum swinging back and forth? Uh, we, we are making a lot of simplifying assumptions, including that the string itself has negligible mass. So, you know, just decide about there. But uh, if you increase the mass, right, is that going to increase the time period? Let's say it would slow it down. Is it going to decrease the time period? Let's say swing fast. Right? Or is it going to have no effect at all? Let me see what you guys are thinking. So show of hands. How many guys think that if you increase the mass, that will slow this down and also increase the time period? Who says that? Who says if you increase the mass, that'll decrease the time period? Swing back and forth really fast. And who says that there's probably no relationship between these two at all? Hmm. Okay, so got a hypothesis on each one of those. Oh, I forgot to define the time period for you guys. The time period is going from the left side back to the left side. So one full back and forth. So swing, swing. That's one full cycle. Okay? The, the time associated with that one full cycle. Okay. Got that. Uh, next variable is oh, what about the starting angle? Uh, just eyeballing this looks, looks about uh, 30 degrees. Oh, actually, no, I can get an exact uh, number from my um, from my drawing. Suppose my drawing is exactly the scale. Okay? Then protractor zero up this vertical dashed uh, reference line. And this, oh, actually, it does sweep through about 29 degrees. Okay, so, okay. But what if you double that from like 30 to 60 degrees? Right? What would that do to the time period? Okay. And then, same three possibilities as before. So, quick hypothesis How many guys think if you increase theta, that will also increase the time period? Who says that? Increase, increase. Like, like slow it down. Who says if you increase that angle, that it'll actually speed up? So, it'll decrease the time period. And who thinks that there's no relationship between these two, that they're independent of each other? Okay, so we've got some hypotheses on each one of those. And finally, uh, the length, right? the length of this pendulum. So what if you make this pendulum longer, longer, longer? 
say you had like 20 centimeters and you went 30, 40, 50 centimeters, as you make it longer. Okay. Right, so same three possibilities for time period. How many of you guys think that as you increase the length, that will also increase the time period? It'll slow it down. Who says that? Longer pendulums, slower swing, right? Longer time period. Who says if you increase the length, that'll actually shorten the time period, make it smaller, speed it up? And who thinks that these two variables are unrelated to each other? They're independent of each other. Increase the length in it has no bearing at all on the time period. Okay, well, we're about to find out. Oh, you know what? One more uh, variable that actually does end up being important that I did not list on this page. Uh, or it, it, can anybody uh, think what that might, might even be? What other variable might also govern the motion of this pendulum that I did not list on here? Because it might be kind of hard to test in a high school class. How about this? Uh, I've got a pendulum set up over here. Okay. I see it swing back and forth. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let me, let me go get along where we're going. I know uh, some of the guys are watching the video in the future too, so I am going to switch the camera over. Okay. We're going to do this lab different from uh, normal labs. I, I was originally going to have you guys go back to lab area and do lab that way, but uh, COVID is raging pretty bad, so we're going to go back to a setup I've been doing a, a quarantine last year. So I'm, I'm just going to do this uh, lab up here, at, like demo style, and then I'll do the lab with you guys, and uh, we'll have all the same data. And um, guess you can do the graphs. I'll tell you what, though, I, I did put um, as much equipment as I have uh, out on the desk individually. So if you want to do this uh, at your own desk, then you do have the equipment for it. Or you know, well, about ten stations. Right, so, uh, turn this camera. Let's see this. Right, make sure this is okay. Right, it's in there. Right, so, right, about this. Here, here's a pendulum. Okay, great. It takes some time to swing back and forth, right? From here to here. Uh, what if I took this to the moon, which has really weak gravity? On the moon, do you think it would swing exactly the same? How many of you guys think it would swing faster <laughs> on the moon? Does that make sense? Right. How about this? What, how many guys think on the moon? Come on. <laughs> it's real slow. Yeah, yeah okay, that, that probably actually is, is what would happen, wouldn't it? Right. Ooh, maybe gravity field. Right. Maybe gravity field. Right. Now, why would I not include gravity field here? Well, it's kind of hard to like, change that in this classroom, right? I mean, maybe if you're really tricky about it, but um, maybe you could have some kind of centrifuge going on. But um, yeah, that's, uh, that's one variable. We, won't really um, test for it, but I'm sure you guys the textbook answer to this uh, equation at the end. But we'll, we'll, we'll construct as much as we can based on these variables. Right, so back to um, some last thoughts going into this. Uh, there are, it looks like, a, you know, besides gravity field, which I left off the list, uh, four variables otherwise that we're juggling, four variables. And we've run into the situation with lots of labs in the past where we have like more than two variables going on. Uh, and you guys know, um, but this is all going to end in some equation that links these four variables together. But along the way, we're going to have to have separate experiments, right? Because really well-designed experiment, you might control two of these and then have one independent, one dependent, sort of like that. Right? That's exactly uh, what we are going to do. And so we need three different experiments. Um, the way we're going to approach this is we're going to relate everything to time period, sort of like as I walked you guys through the hypothesis, like, oh, does this affect time? This affect time? This affect time? Right? That's exactly what we're going to do. And then at the very end, we'll be able to bring it all together into one giant equation. Right? So this page, uh, you guys can probably kind of tell how this copied is um, I uh, used a slightly different version of this in the past, and then I modified this. And so it, th th this page is going to be good enough for us, right? Got some tables on one side, got some space for graphs on the other. We'll be able to do most of this today. And then um, uh, based on the uh, past classes, um, have to finish this uh, first thing tomorrow and then uh, move on to demos and notes. All right, so uh, these uh, tables at a glance, they look the same. They have all the same columns. But if you dig into it, uh, well, you can see some hash marks in some of these columns to say like, ah, like maybe use the same number over and over, kind of like those would be controls, right? So it's got mass. Um, we'll go ahead and just measure in grams for this lab. So that's an appropriate scale for this one. Uh, that is um, going to be a control control for for this particular table. So whatever the mass is, just leave that the same. Right? Same frame thing for the uh, the starting angle. Leave that control. Right. And okay, now length. 
uh, well, that has a bunch of open boxes. So maybe that could be something to change. The length for this particular table would be like the independent variable, right? Going to change the length. And then, ooh, ooh, I have two time columns. There's time sub 10 and time sub one. And time sub one is the uh, capital T time period. Okay. So you guys see where I'm going with this. This is something you guys have seen before is if you let it swing back and forth 10 times and then divide that by 10, then okay, that would give you like a calculated uh, time period. And, and, and the, re the, the advantage of that, remember what the advantage of doing it that, that way is versus just letting it swing back and forth once and trying to grab that, is that there's a certain error involved in trying to start and stop the stopwatch. Okay? And if you just let it swing back and forth once, then well, that error is embedded in that number. But if you let it swing back and forth 10 times and then divide by 10, that error also gets divided by 10. Right? So you get a lot more accurate uh, results. Uh, you know what else uh, uh, I meant to mention too? Is you guys have seen this capital T in different contexts. Uh, in a different context, it might represent like tension in a string, uh, but in, in this particular context, it's referring to time, right? Like time period. Okay? Uh, usually, capital T is like, like time period if it refers to some kind of time. Okay? So that time period we're going to treat as like the dependent variable. Think of that way. Okay? Uh, next um, table, we'll look at all the tables first to get get a big broad picture of what's going on. Uh, mass. Okay, well, that could be controlled again. Uh, ooh, this one, oh, it looks like we're changing the angle. That could be like the independent variable. The length would be controlled. And then we're gonna see what happens to the time period as a result. That would be like the dependent variable, okay? Right, so C is control, I the independent variable, DV dependent variable. Right, and then the last experiment we're gonna have to run is this guy right here. So uh, it looks like the mass is gonna be the independent variable. We'll change, swap out different masses then control the angle and the length and see how, the, how do different masses affect, uh, affect the time period. Okay. Uh, okay. There's another table on here. So if you mess up on one of the tables, you need to start over, then you have, you have a spare table you can work with. Okay. Okay. Guys get that? See where we're going with this? Okay. Actually, that last table that I just showed you guys right here with the masses, the independent variable, uh, let's have that as the first experiment that we did. So like I said, I'm just going to do this up uh, in front of the classroom, demo style, and uh, we can all just do this lab together. Get the same data all day. Okay. Right, so I got to know, uh, so what, what is the length of this pendulum? Right, so this is looking like right here. Go from the center mass of the slab weight up to the top. About 66 centimeters. So 66 centimeter length. Okay. Uh, if you're at home watching the video, I'll turn the camera back eventually so you can see what I'm writing too. Okay. I need it, it, that would be controlled, so I'm not going to change the length of this thing. Uh, starting angle. Uh, now I do have a protractor. Uh, no, this is an angle from the vertical. Maybe you'd want to specify that if you were to write down lab directions. So right now it's at zero degrees from the vertical. Right, you guys remember how to use this protractor is there's um, a node in the middle and there's numbers that sweep uh, out the side. So if I pull this pendulum back to some angle, as long as I hold the protractor straight vertical, uh, that string can cross through the node and through one of the angles. Like right there is 30 degrees from the vertical. And actually that's the angle I'm probably gonna use most of the time is 30 degrees. So let's go 30 degree angle. Right. And oh, the, the mass attached to this is 100 grams. Okay. Oh, who has their cell phone up at, uh, as a stopwatch? Who, who wants to do a stopwatch? Oh, yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, thank you for volunteering that. All right, so, all right, so all those numbers, we got 100 grams, 66 centimeters, pull us back 30 degrees. Okay, we're going to count 10 cycles, and uh, Carl's going to count uh, how much time does it take to do that. Okay, ready? Okay, ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 16.40. All right. So then the time per single cycle would be 1.64. Okay. 
seconds per second. Right. Let me turn the camera so guys watching the video can see. All right. These we got at 100 grams, pulled 30 degrees from the vertical, 66 centimeter long pendulum. Took about 16 seconds to cycle 10 times, so 1.6 seconds per cycle. There you go. Okay. All right. uh, now I need to choose different masses. Right. That's going to be the independent variable. Uh, now, good uh, scientific thought is that uh, when I choose different masses, um, I, I can keep the angle at 30 degrees. That, that's fine. The length actually will change a little bit. And uh, so, so, yeah, just, just uh, keep, keep that uh, idea in the back of your mind. Uh, I'll, I'll show you guys why. There, there's two, uh, two reasons that that would uh, be the case. Um, it's going to change it. So get rid of 100 grams. Oh, I should start with a really small one. Start with a small one here. Okay. So two reasons that the effective length has changed. One reason is that we've been assuming that the mass of the string is negligible compared to the bob. Okay. That's less true for the smaller masses, right? Now the ratio of the mass of the string to the weight itself is, eh, okay, it's kind of getting, which would effectively raise the center mass a little bit. Okay. Uh, the other reason is that smaller weights are physically smaller. Right? They take more volume. So that would also uh, raise the center mass a little bit. So uh, I'll see what the actual length of this thing is. Um, we're we're going to keep the number 66, although more accurately, it's probably closer to 64. But just keep that in back in mind that uh, length is not exactly controlled. But um, it's only a, it, it'd be really hard to, I mean, it would, it would take a long time to get like exactly 66 centimeters. So I'll uh, touch that a little bit. Right, ready, Carl? Times? Right, so we got, um, so this is a 20 grams, 20 grams. Right, here we go, 20 grams. And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 15.97. Okay, so the 20 grams. All right. Uh, let's move up to 50 grams. 50. Right, pull us back. All right, ready? And go. Oh, no, it's not stop, stop, stop. I messed that up. All right, ready? And Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sixteen, twenty-two. And those fifty grams. Let's do 200 grams. So 200 grams. All right, ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 16.40. That's it. All right. And last one we'll do is going to be 500 grams. That's a 500. These pretty big lab weights right here. All right, ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sixteen, fifty, sixteen point five zero. All right, I turn the camera back where you're watching the video, you can see it. All right. So here's what we got. Uh, we have all different masses, same angle, approximately same length, 
And ooh, it looks like the time was pretty consistently like 1.6 something uh, seconds per, per cycle, regardless of the mass, you know, wildly different masses. Or from 20 to 500, that's um, but like a 25 fold uh, increase. But yeah, hard, hardly any difference at all in, uh, on the uh, time period. Now, we'll make a graph of this later to uh, confirm this, but already it's looking like no relationship between these two. Uh, maybe you hypothesize that. And you know what? Maybe that makes sense too from another Galileo experiment. I mentioned Galileo earlier, that he was uh, trying to figure out the answer to this question about what governs the pendulum. He was also trying to uh, figure out if you drop uh, different size objects from leaning tower pizza, which is the ground first. Remember, they all fall together. They all hit the ground at the same time. Because heavier objects have more gravity force on them, but they also have more inertia. And those two effects cancel out. You guys remember that from fall semester. Uh, this is actually consistent with that, isn't it? Because whether something's in you know, pure free fall or if you just attach it to a pendulum, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, it, it's kinematic motion uh, is independent of its mass and weight regardless. Right? That's what it's looking like. Huh. Okay, so like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap that in a few minutes, but uh, let's do the next experiment, which is, oh, ooh, this angle. So as I change this angle, how is that going to affect it? Now we're going to measure in degrees. Uh, so if there ends up in a relationship, uh, maybe it has something to do with the sine or cosine possibly. Um, I don't know, just thinking ahead. You know, like, well, I'm pretending I, I don't know the outcome of this, right? Uh, let's use a uh, hundred grams all the way down, and we'll, we'll keep the same sixty-six centimeters. Okay, hundred grams and sixty-six centimeters. Okay. But uh, I need all different angles. So the angles. Let's go with uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, and fifty degrees from the vertical. Okay. Turn this camera. Okay, I've got 100 grams. Just confirm the length. That is 66 centimeters right there. 100 grams, 66 centimeters. Right, pull us back 10 degrees from the vertical. Right, ready, right. ready, and. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sixteen oh three. Sixteen oh three. Pull those back to twenty degrees. Oh, uh, side note here too is you might notice that um, there's a little bit of friction actually. That's the way I wire this up. It's probably not the best way, uh, so that this is kind of sliding right here, uh, and that does uh, zap a little bit of energy out of the system. And uh, say if I pull it back to like 20 degrees, by the time it's swung through a few cycles, it's it's, it's probably lost some degrees. Uh, so yeah, probably good things to take note of. You know, if you're being really scientific about it, but um, at least have a starting angle that starts that way. Okay, 20 degrees. Okay, ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sixteen twenty eight. Okay. Sixteen twenty eight. 30 degrees. Get ready and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sixteen, twenty two. 40 degrees. See, I'm still holding the protractor vertical. The string is going through the node and through the 40 degree mark. Okay, ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sixteen forty six. Sixteen forty six. Okay. And then fifty degrees. From the vertical, see, let's see, zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, let's see how close this is now. Yeah, it's it's lost. Uh, it's down to about thirty degrees at this point. But sorry, did you say sixteen fifty eight? Okay. So yeah, so that angle was not uh, consistent as you know we kept swinging, but um, you guys see where this is going anyway, which is that probably didn't even matter because uh, looks like angle um uh, is also independent of the time period. Time period is independent of the angle. Which like this is. Uh, and talking right at the same time. One point six six. Okay. Uh, yeah, scan was about one point six something seconds, uh, regardless of the starting angle. Okay. So we've tested two of these variables. See how how does that affect time period? I changed the mass. Looks like it made no difference. Change the starting angle. Looks like it makes no difference. Okay. Right. Now let's go to length. Okay. Length of this thing. Um, I'll keep the same 100 grams. Uh, I'm going to start the angle at 30 degrees for all these. Although, you guys just see from the other experiments we just did that those two numbers probably don't even affect this thing. But how, how about length of the pendulum? Hmm. So, uh, you know what? I'll sort of cheat on the first one because we've got 66 centimeters. And we already have the data point from that. Um, well, either 16.22 or 16.40. Um, uh, maybe I'll take the first one we did 16.40. Okay. All right. So I need to make this shorter. And So we got here. This is fifty five centimeters. Fifty five. I said fifty five centimeters. Mm -hmm. All right. And go. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fourteen, sixty. Ooh, ooh. Now we've uh looks like we've got some variability now. Okay. Let's see how this thing is holding its angle now. That angle right there is ooh, who's at twenty-five? degrees now okay so it looks like it's holding its angle better i did tie this a little bit different before it was like sliding across this top rod and now it's uh, not anymore now it's just like pivoting about this point which is actually better set up i should have been doing this from the start I just didn't uh, catch that but um let's go make this shorter Looking at 49, 49 centimeters. All right, 
Okay, ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thirteen eighty two. Right. We got uh, thirty seven centimeters, thirty seven. Pull it back to 30 degrees. Get ready. And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twelve, fourteen. Got right, thirty three centimeters, thirty three. Right, and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven twenty-two. All right. All right, let's do one more. Okay. All right. All right. So this last one is fifteen centimeters. Fifteen. All right, ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven point seven one. All right. So for the online watch list, right. here's our data. Uh, now just looking at this, I see that, okay, as the pendulum got shorter and shorter, uh, so did the time period. The time period also got shorter and shorter. I wonder, though, uh, exactly what kind of relationship that is. I mean, there's definitely something going on here. Is it a direct relationship? Which would mean that, like, if you had half length, you'd have half the time period? Or is it some kind of root relationship? Or what What exactly? Well, let's try to put these graphs together. Well, Let's put the graphs together in the same order that we got the data. So this one, this one, this one. That's the experiments we did. Uh, so, and, and you guys kind of know what the graphs gonna look like for the first two anyway, but uh, it's good practice to plot these. Uh, the first one we did was um, time period versus mass. So we're gonna treat these like x, y coordinates. Okay? Treat these two columns like x, yeah, x, y, x, y. So mass, time periods. Okay, so on the other side of the, this page, there's um, the P graphs. Uh, Dan had a slightly different uh, setup in the past in recycling these materials. So you guys got a really tiny graph here, T versus M. Now your biggest time period, that, well, oh, actually they're all about the same time period. N nothing greater than two seconds though. So maybe I'll scale it like that. Well, it, uh, time period in seconds. We got zero, one, two, right? 
And then there's going to be mass in grams. Okay. And that go, oh, goes up to 500. So the biggest one I have to have is 500. So let's go one, two, three, four, 500, zero, uh, 500, like that. So scale 100 grams each. Right. And we need to plot these points. So say so at 100 grams, it was 1.64 seconds. 100 grams, 1.64 seconds. Let's write that there. At 20 grams, it was 1.60. 20 grams, 1.6. So let's actually mess up that. Uh, I should go up about here. 50 grams, 1.62. Right about there. Uh, 200 grams, 1.64. 200 grams, 1.64. Then 500 grams, 1.65. All right. So you guys see that it's basically just a horizontal line. Horizontal line. Okay. Right. The fact that it's a horizontal line means that there's no relationship between these two variables. No relationship because you, know, you can make mass whatever you want, and time period does not respond. Time period is just the same regardless. It maybe it's related to those other variables like, like the length of the pendulum, but then not the mass, not the mass of the ball. Okay. Right, next graph over time period versus the starting angle. So we've got time period in seconds versus the starting angle in degrees. Okay. Remember the title of the graph is always y versus x. Okay. So t versus theta in this case, t theta. All right, so that's this experiment. Uh, the angles went up to 50 degrees, so it goes 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees. Okay. And the corresponding time periods, uh, ah, you know, they're kind of in the same ballpark as before. So it goes 0, 1, 2 seconds, 0, 1, 2 seconds. Okay. Let's plot these coordinates. Uh, so at 10 degrees, it was 1.6 seconds. 10 degrees, 1.6 seconds. 20, 1.63. 20, 1.63. 30 degrees, 1.62. 1.62. 40 degrees, 1.65. Uh, and 50 degrees, 1.66. Okay, so again, just like the last graph, that's basically a horizontal graph, right? Which again means that there is no relationship between the two variables. Okay, you can make that starting angle, uh, looks like anything, right? Zero to 50 degrees, time period doesn't care, just does whatever. All right, so that's going to bring us to the big graph. I know those are kind of small, but they came out to be no relationship anyway. Right? So the big blown up graph. This is uh, going to be something interesting going on here. We have time period in seconds versus length of the pendulum in, well, let's go centimeters. That's what measuring in. Appropriate size for this line. Right? Uh, what were the lengths? They, well, they went up to 66 centimeters. So I have to scale those accordingly. Uh, let's see. We can go five centimeters at a time. So, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, yeah, that'll contain all the length of data. And then time period. So, the biggest time period was 1.64 seconds. So, it goes up to two seconds. So, let's see. Zero, one point oh, two point oh. Okay, so that should contain all the data. Okay, let's plot these points. Uh, so we got sixty six centimeters, one point six four seconds. Sixty six, one point six, 
four seconds is right about there. Uh, 55 centimeters, 1.46 seconds. 55, 1.46, right about there. Uh, 49, 1.38. 49, 1.38 plus. And then, uh, okay, I misplaced that dot. I did. It should be down here. Hit that one. Uh, got 37, 1.21. 37, 1.21. Got 33, 1.12, 33, 1.12. Okay. Uh, and then at 15 centimeters, 0. 0.77 seconds. 67, it's right about there. All right. Okay, so you know, at a glance, you can see what saw in the table data anyway, which is that as the length increases, the time period also increases, slows down. Of course, we found the data reverse of that. But uh, so next thing we have to figure out is well, what exactly kind of relationship uh, is this? Uh, maybe it's a direct relationship that say like if you double the length, you also double the time period. And if that were true, then you should be able to draw a line like like a straight line, and it should go through the origin. Uh, if you were to do that, say hold this straight edge right here, go zip. Well, okay, looks like it, the, the data points themselves look like they might line up the straight line, but it would not, if, if you extrapolate backwards, that would not cross through the origin, which is maybe a red flag that that's not the relationship. And this is something that we've run into in the past a, a number of times on, on different labs. Uh, because what, what that intercept would mean is that for a zero length pendulum, it would approach. Uh, like some particular time period to swing back and forth, and maybe that doesn't really make any logical sense. Um, maybe it makes more logical sense that this uh, origin point zero zero should, should should be somewhere on the graph. Okay. Now you could determine that scientifically by going back and getting like really short pendulums and seeing that's the case. That would end up being the case though. So if this is not a straight line relationship, do you guys think that there's probably like a kind of a curve that goes through these points? Maybe some kind of a curve kind of graph. You guys are looking at that again. Hmm. I think that's probably a square root. Who's thinking that's probably a square root relationship? If you were thinking that, uh, I think that actually is how this is going to play out. Uh, now, how could you figure that out uh, exactly? Well, that's what these last uh, couple of graphs are for. They're for uh, axis manipulation. Uh, and also on the on the tables, you may have noticed I left uh, one column blank at the end, so you could uh, actually do a calculation and uh, manipulate. Uh, something else. So this is a, the, the next part of this lab, which we'll have to save for tomorrow, uh, is we're going to do an axis manipulation. We're going to know that exactly what's the relationship between time period and length of the pendulum. And then we'll put all, uh, we'll, we'll put everything together and get an equation right at the very end. Okay. Okay, so hang on to this page and we'll finish this lab tomorrow.